Hello, today I'll be doing several things. I'm going to show you how to use a scaling divider. We'll be having a look at some of my art shopping and some of the things that I've got hold of and I want to have a look at. Um, we'll be having a look at a technique for making normal paper into paper that you can use with water-based paints and things like that. So we've got several things to look at, so let's crack on with it. Here are two pieces of paper. One is normal drawing paper for dry media such as graphite and pastels. That's this one here. This is the exact same type of paper but what I've done is sized it. What that means is I've put some gelatine over it so that it resists water and what that ends up doing is as you can see the paint actually sits on top of the paper rather than soaking into it now I applied it onto it uh, I made a mixture of water and gelatine and then applied it with one of these. This is only a strip of it. I obviously have a larger piece of paper. What then is the difference between normal paper and this paper that's sized? Let's just check it with some water and a brush and we'll do the unsized one and hopefully you'll be able to see what happens. You notice how uh, the paper has soaked up the water straight away. Let's try that on the other paper. Now that didn't happen with that, it's actually sitting on the top of the paper because it's been protected by a water resistant layer. What that means is if I go to paint on this and then do exactly the same on this other one it flows a, a lot better and that will keep flowing for a long time whereas this one that's been unsized you'll have difficulty with You also, with the unsized paper, get a, a watermark round the paper. You don't get that when it's sized. So that's the difference between normal paper and sized paper. Now most watercolour paper and media papers are sized before you get it. But I'm doing this because I want to test the right materials for when I make my own paper. So I hope this has been helpful to you and we'll move on from here. Here's an experimental picture that I've done onto glossy laser print paper. and It's with watercolour and because of the glossiness, it, it kind of moves about in a way that normal paper wouldn't really do. And just to show it, it is quite glossy that if you can see the if you can see the shine on it. But I got this paper from um, a big uh, industrial printing press that uses this type of paper. I thought I could use it on my printer at home, but 
it obviously wasn't compatible with that but I found out recently that you can actually use this in a similar way to you pour paper so I'm going to be doing a lot more experimenting with this particular paper um, this is just a, a play around really so I just thought I'd show you that over the weekend I did a bit of art shopping for some equipment so I'm going to show you one or two bits that I've got hold of so I got some paper and this paper in Muller is it? I don't know how you pronounce that 25 sheets and it's 310 grams mixed media paper I've had a brief go with it and it's a fairly nice paper that it's in a block so that is quite nice uh, paper that I regularly use it's fairly cheap this I know it says six pound that's its recommended retail price but it's about two pound ninety nine at a, a shop called B and M uh, in the UK but there's a lot of shops have these types of paper and it really is just for drawing media this it's it's very it has very little texture but it it does work very well with pencil sketching and uh, pastels as well and that one is uh, 30 sheets at 160 GSM so that's my paper are these going reasonably cheap uh, set of sharpies 28 although there are several duplications within that so I don't suppose I've got 28 individual colours uh, I'll look forward to using them because I'm not a, a mark pen user really but we'll see what we can do with those the big thing I got what this Kohinoor set of water soluble colour pencils it's the Mondolas 72 set you get three more brushes and two pencil sharpeners with it I've had a brief go with uh, testing a few of them and if we if you can see that one or two of them key colours and they're quite vibrant and even when you wet them what I want to do now is show you this particular tool that I use to get accurate scale and drawings accurate it's called a, a scaling divider this one's made by Derwent but there are lots of companies that actually make this type of tool so what what this actually does is that point there if you can see that is the exact center when you put this pin to there that end and this end are both exactly the same distance but if you take them along this scale here the far away from the center it is the more difference there is in the scale so it might be small at this end and quite large at this end which it is because if I put my finger there it comes to there and if I put it again same finger and it's only about half the distance so that's a really good tool because what we can now do is set our main photo that we're doing and get a measurement and go right well it's about that big so I 
as a starting point. And then we'll move to there. See if we can extend that down a bit. So I now know that that point there is exactly there. Or is it that one? Sorry. No, it would be that there. So that would extend that way a bit. So that's another th measurement that we can now make. go like that and then let's see if we can go like that and you're looking for key points now it's almost like dot to dot because that's where that goes now And once we've got that, we can work his way out. So your next key point is going to be maybe there. Just get that. Gonna come up about there. And how far from that key point there is that? So that's about that. So that's where that's gonna come to. I'm not going to draw all of this, I'm just giving you a rough idea uh, what you can do. We'll come down here and then we'll do the eye and then I'll call that done. So what I've drawn up to now is that. Don't go down very much at all, and then that to there, that goes. Bring that to about to where the bottom point is there. About there. And you, although it's a slow way of doing it, it's a very accurate kind of way of doing it. One more thing I will do is we'll 
then plot that one out. Now all we have to do, I'll zoom it in a little bit, see if we can actually see it a bit easier. Right, so taking it from that, that point there, I'm looking up and I'm going right, it's, it's about that far to the eye. Make sure that that's tightly gripped up. We've got a good measurement of it. So do exactly the same here. Want a line going up there somewhere. How far up do we need to go? So we'll be looking at that point. And we'll be looking at that point. down a little bit and that will be where it starts at eye is although it does come down a little bit like that so get the full distance of the eye we'll do that there And that is where your eye's going to be. I'm not going to be plotting out absolutely everything here. I'll, I'll make a rough assessment of where things are. I just want to do one more little brief thing there. And that's get this eye part here in. So... How far along is it from there to the centre of, from there to there, it's that much. You can do exactly the same with this. As you can see, you can you can build up an image pretty easily, and it's by using this. It's a scaling divider. Thank you for looking in and watching my video this time. And if you like what you see, why not subscribe or give me a like? Thank you. <laughs>